Hi there guys, it's Mike from MCQ Bushcraft here and I'm down by the coastline just waiting for the tide to go out. It's just started going out in about four to six hours we should be at low tide. But until then, I wanted to show you a few items I've got in front of me. And both these items are fishing kits. On the right hand side we have a fresh water fishing kit. And I've demonstrated this kit, or a similar kit to this, in previous videos where I've caught fish inland on small rivers and streams. But a small kit like this is going to be very difficult to use in an environment like this. You're not going to be able to get any range casting it out and the tackle is just too small. And this is why on my left hand side here I've got my coastal fishing kit. A small pocket kit like this is very easy to make and it doesn't take an awful lot to put something like this together if you're looking to fish on the coastline. If I open this up I'll show you what's inside. And First of all we have some 20 pound monofilament line and this is the main line I use here on the coastline. I have a pouch here and I'll talk about that in a moment. We've got some bank line as well, this is very good for ridge lines. You can use 550 cord as well. But the main items that I have here, which are pre-made up, I've made these prior to getting down here. I usually have them pre-made before I obviously go out and do fishing because it takes an awful long time to assemble all of this if you're sitting on the beach. But these are pre-made up lines with number one hooks. We've got some big sinkers there, these are SGs out of shotgun cartridges. We've got 20 pound line and we've got swivels and clips which allow quick connection and disconnection and the swivels allow the line to be spun and it doesn't weaken the line if a fish is on the line for a very long time because when you're out fishing at sea and you're waiting for the tide to go out and you're fishing in this manner, the fish can be on the line for four to six hours. The way this setup fits together will probably seem quite unclear at this point in the video although some of you may understand how it goes together. But that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to set this up out at sea and catch some fish for dinner. And I've been staying out here for about five days now and I've caught some fish and I've done a bit of hunting as well. And uh, there's lots of vegetation, lots of wild spinach and there's alexanders and loads of other plants around. I brought some supplies with me. I've got oats and rice and other forms of carbohydrate that provide you with very good energy. Carbohydrate can be used very quickly by the body, very simple for the body to break down and use as energy. And it's usually the sort of thing that's quite hard to find out in nature in environments like this unless you're prepared to do a lot of digging for various types of roots and tuber. But what we're going to do in this video is get this set up together out there and we're going to catch some fish and I'm going to show you how it goes together and basically how I catch fish on the coastline. So let's wait for this tide to go out and we'll see what we can do. tide's on its way out, it's revealed a bit of sand for us to have a forage through and the bait we're going to be using is lugworm. It's an easy bait to dig up and a very good bait and you can catch a broad range of fish with lugworm. I quite like using them and uh, they're easy to put on the hook and it just makes for a very clean reliable setup. I'm using a shovel to dig up lugworms and I've used digging sticks before and it's a hard job especially when you have to dig up 30 or 40. It can burn a lot of resources so if you've got a shovel on you I wouldn't worry about using it. I keep this one in the back of the truck and it's always at hand and I'm more than happy to be using it today because we're going to need about 10 or 12 lugworms but I'm going to get a few extra just in case because things can always go wrong. I've got some stakes as well. These are going to form our ridge line from A to B. When the tide goes out completely we'll go to the furthest point and get these stakes in. But this is just using some green hazel and uh, green hazel can split quite easily so we'll cover a few te techniques later that we can use to make that a little bit less likely because you don't want your setup going to pop and you're losing all your lines when you're out. But let's go dig up some bait. So this is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm looking for lugworm. We've got the excreted cast just there and the other end the breather hole. And underneath the ground here, or the sand, will be an enormous U-shaped canal that the lugworm will be in. And 
it can go up to about half a meter deep. Sometimes they can go very, very deep. I prefer digging for lugworms at the lowest tidal point, and I find their numbers are far greater out there, but beggars can't be choosers, and we just have to make use of the time as best we can. Sometimes this breather hole isn't always present, especially when the tide's just gone out. It can take away this excreted cast just from the waves. But if we cover that up, you'll see that the U-shaped junction could be anywhere in that area. But seeing this breather hole means that I know I need to dig in this area just here to get the lugworm out. I'd advise a wider shovel than this sometimes because if it's quite wide like this, you can take the entire canal out with the lugworm in it in two shovelfuls and not damage the worm. But with a thin shovel, if you're digging in sometimes, you can miss areas of the canal and split it and actually chop the worm up. But you just need to be careful and just see how you get on and develop your own technique and just have a bit of experience with digging them up and you'll soon know what to do. But I'm going to start digging this one up. go down twice, get two shovel falls out, have a little look around, sometimes you want to get your hands in, just take some of the bottom sludge away, sometimes the worm is in there, it doesn't look like it will be. It's always worth checking. So now we'll check these other areas here. In fact, I can see the worm just here. If I just move the camera, hopefully you can see that. And there he is. A big black lugworm right there. And that's basically what we're looking for. And it's a very, very good bait. So we'll get that in the pot and go digging for more. One thing I advise you do is you always cover or refill the hole you've dug. Just to be kind to the marine life that don't want to be exposed to the sun. Because it can kill some things. You can see what hard work it can be without a shovel. So it's always worth having a folding one with you. Something that's comfortable to use. But with this lugworm here, I've just got my titanium mug. It's not a bad size, I've seen them way longer. You can have them up to about 30 or 40 centimetres in length. And we'll just pop him in there. A little bit of sand on top of him. And he'll be fine. And we'll go find another. There's another. There's the cast, there's the breather hole. Barely visible, but there we go. A good indicator that the canal is just here. in the two handfuls that I took out the bottom so it's always worth double checking. I've done that so many times and always found them at the bottom. Two shovelfuls and a couple of handfuls and we have another one just there. That looks like a blow lugworm which is just a slightly different type of lugworm. Some of them excrete a yellow dye, I wouldn't worry about it, it's harmless.
decent size. Digging, we should have a good amount. There's one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've got 10 pretty good sized lugworms there. Some of them are a bit small. That one there is really small. Um, I'll keep that as a bit of fodder. But this is about the size you're looking for. I mean, these will be absolutely fine. It's, it's a mixture of, uh, of different lugworms here by the looks of it. But what I'll do now is I'll just get these in the pot. They can keep in a pot like this with a bit of sand and salt water for you know, a couple of days, you'll, you'll be absolutely fine. But I just avoid throwing them in with dead lugworms. So just put the live ones in and throw the lugworms away or keep them in a separate pot if you want to use them as fodder to add onto to the bait. But we'll get these in here now. I'm going to dig up a couple more. The tide's nearly on its way out. And we'll get our posts in the ground and start digging. out far enough now. I've got my stakes here. We'll go get them driven in the ground. So we're going to start here. You don't want to start back there and work towards the tide because obviously you might end up in the water because your ridge line won't be tall enough. So you want to work backwards all the time. I'm at a fairly low point on the tide here. So this should be perfect. And when we drive this in the ground, it should be quite a few feet deep under water, which is what we want. But to drive this in, sand can be pretty tough to hammer through. I'm just going to put some weight on it to get it going. So now we're going to use a beach stone to hammer it in. And you may think, well, why not a hammer or an axe, the back of an axe? it will split the hazel. The beach stone won't split the hazel because it has such an even striking surface. So there we are, that shouldn't go anywhere. And that stake was the same length as this. We've hammered about this much into the ground. But what we do now take our ridge line and work backwards. And the way I have my ridge line tied for the fishing system is that that part with the big loop on is reserved for knotting, just so I don't cut it too short, because there will be loops tied into this. The first knot I tie is a clove hitch, just like that. If you're unfamiliar with the clove hitch, it's a useful knot. It's worth looking up. That should be a self-tightening knot, it doesn't come loose. And then I can wrap it round again and just tie a series of granny knots. So that should be absolutely fine. We'll just reel this backward now, check our length of our ridge line, and then we know where to put this second post. In. Pull your ridge line nice and taut. It's not flapping everywhere. You can see it's got a lot of stretch in it. And, uh, 
go back to about here. That should do it. This has got quite a bit of stretch in it, you want it quite taut. my pocket fishing kit out I'll show you what these loops are for and there are 11 of these on the ridge line that I've pre-tied to go with the 11 pre-tied hooks and lines that I've made up and these loops just allow you to clip the line to it if I just unravel this you'll see what I mean so it has this little clip on it and you just break that clip open. Nonny goes like that. I make these lines about three foot long. You can make them any length really, but you just want them to be quite far away from the ridge line. And each loop is two arms lengths away from you one another and this means that these can't make contact okay so we have quite a large number one hook there a barbed one we don't really want an, an unbarbed hook and we'll just take out one of these lug worms here it's a fairly small one don't worry about the uh, the sand on it i usually put the hook straight through the head of the lug worm. You can see I damaged this one just as I took it out. That's not a problem. And you want the lug worm really to be part of the line almost. So you can see I'm feeding it on and it's sliding up the hook and eventually it will go over this knot. It takes a bit of persuasion to get over the knot but if you're having trouble you can always bring the hook out part way get him up the knot like that and see he's over the knot now he's onto the line just like this you can just loop the last part I've broken him there but that's fine you will get a few that might go a bit pear shaped but essentially something like that so the lug worm is, is part of the line and hook and the hook is just poking out of the bottom and we'll do the rest. Our bait and everything is set and whether we catch anything will hopefully be down to the success of what we've done here the ocean and the creatures that live within it and hopefully we'll get one or two fish on a on a setup like this so I don't imagine that we'll get too many there'll be a lot of smaller fish and all other creatures picking at our bait 
but that's why you set out so many. This is just 11 lines, ideally there'd be 25, even more, and then our successes could be even higher. But I'm going to retire, because I've got to get up at 3 in the morning to come out here and check this. So I'll see you in the morning, guys. Good night. It's about 3am and uh, the tide's on its way out now. So I've just come down to the coast and it's just retracting back very gradually. And I'm just keeping my eye out to make sure I can spot my lines. There are seals in these waters here and generally when you do a bit of trawling out here the seals will try and get the fish before you do and often you can just find heads. Obviously bits of fish caught on the line and such but we'll just keep watching the tide go out see what we've got. So guys, I'm just checking my lines. And it looks like we've got a fish. With success on my first night's fishing, I decide to reset my lines, rebait them for a second night to see what I can get. Well, guys, it's early morning. The tide's turned a little bit. It's out much later in the day than it was last night. Last night I came out at about half three and I was pretty much ready to go. Getting the lines in, fish was on the line, we had a dogfish last night, as you saw in the footage. But tonight it's about, well it's about six in the morning now. I came out here at three, the tide was way too high so I just went back to bed for a couple of hours and I've just come out. We have three fish on the line today which is a brilliant turnout, big ones too. We've got one just further down which is the biggest and um, we've got this one here. All our baits gone and a beautiful sea bass, absolutely lovely. We have a smaller fish just up there, I think it's a goby but uh, I'll probably let that one go because it's, it's pretty small and it's obviously just taken the bait there. But we'll get these bagged up and get them out of their misery because they've probably been on the line for quite some time. A small fish 
fish like this I would most likely use as bait for a following night. So it doesn't go to waste. You can actually use these small fish as bait. Um, this one's a bit too big so we have to kill it and chop it up, put it on the lines and hopefully that would bring in even more fish. But the hook has actually killed this one. It's gone straight through its brain. So there's no need to actually kill it. But the hook is, has already done the job. for a good couple of days and you can even cut this into thin slices and smoke it over a fire to preserve it. It will go a long way and I could put more out tomorrow and catch even more so it's a very sustainable way of catching food. The bones as well can be removed but I'll probably just slice this straight down the middle, spread it open and cook it over a fire just the way it is and pick the meat off. The bones are quite big for this particular fish so I don't need to worry about lots of little needles going in my mouth when I'm eating pieces of meat. It should be easy to separate which is quite nice. But I need to uh, get these spines off. I'm going to use a pair of scissors from my med kit to cut those off because it's a bit too dangerous to use the knife and I could dull the edge on this rock if I give it a bit too much power. Very slippery as well but this is going to need to dry out as well. Well guys, tonight's my last night here and I think I'll spend this evening on the beach eating some sea bass and various other wild edibles that I'll collect. Unfortunately I can't film it. I've got about five minutes left on this SD card and it's my last one. And I've been down here for about a week doing various videos on a variety of different things so it's just the luck of the draw really but it'll be nice to eat dinner in peace on the beach without a camera in some respects. But I will do some cooking videos in the future showing various methods of cooking fish in combination with wild edibles. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful and I appreciate you watching and I'll see you very soon for another one. Take care guys.